uh, hello everyone i am nikita representative of tantra minds a uh, very warm welcome everyone to this webinar uh, so today we are excited to be able to bring this informative and engaging discussion today and we know that your time is really valuable so we want to make the most of it and uh, thanks everyone for shelling out time from your busy schedule and be the part of this webinar Uh, so today we are presenting uh, streamlining your supply chain with powerful supplier collaboration platform with our tantra mind supplier collaboration platform uh, so now i will quickly run you through our today's agenda so we are going to first go with panelist introduction then we are going to talk about our products and services offered by the tantra minds and uh, challenges in the process and uh, then we are going to talk about our platform uh, how our platform could be the solution to all these and uh, at last we are going to give you the demo to give you a glimpse about our portal and uh, we will conclude this session by answering all your queries uh, so little housekeeping before we start the session so everyone please feel free to uh, type your queries of uh, concern in the question box if you have any during mm -hmm. the session uh, we'll try to address them in the during the session and in the qa round as well uh, so now i would like to introduce our speakers so at first we have mr chandan nigotkar he is a delivery head of tantra minds it professional with solid experience in global it uh, service delivery plus account management project and program management for global clients with over almost 20 years plus of experience on hand and uh, then we have a second speaker mr nitin deshmukh uh, he is a leading product to, uh, development team here and uh, he is the key person in terms of development execution and solution architect in uh, tantra minds so without further ado we'll turn the time over to uh, chandan to give our audience insights of tantra minds and to run through the product uh, over to you chandan okay uh, thank you nikita Uh, again a very warm uh, welcome to all uh, thank you for joining the webinar today uh, hope you will get a valuable business insights into how our supply collaboration platform helps uh, to tackle day to day activities challenges um, for your uh, supplier collaboration uh, i will start with a quick introduction of tantra minds as an organization and then quick uh, quick uh, overview of our product lines so uh, who we are uh, basically so tantra mind is part of amdan group of companies we are technology group specializing in uh, sap consulting through our amdan brand and we also have product suite and uh, product offerings delivered through uh, tantra mind as a brand uh, tantra mind is basically a product company uh, we have cutting edge products which are based on ai ml technologies Uh, which are helping our customer tackling pain points and overcoming day to day challenges in various uh, different aspect and in multiple um, lines of business uh, you can see as an organization uh, we are a combination of uh, consulting workforce uh, we had uh, i'm then established a long back almost uh, 11 years back and we also have a technology workforce we have a very strong understanding of business processes across various industries like manufacturing uh, retail utilities pharma or uh, automotive etc uh, we also have got strong technical architects and technical development team and with this combination of both uh, we are able to bring an innovative set of products uh, to the market quickly uh, where we are what we do uh, uh, we are a global organization Uh, with presence in uh, europe india uh, us and other countries uh, our headquarters is in london uh, we have our development and delivery centers in pune uh, we have a large customer base uh, spread across uh, europe india uh, us south america and other countries uh, so with that uh, uh, that was a very quick uh, overview about uh, tantra mind as an organization i will uh, now quickly go through uh, the next slide which is uh, our uh, product suite so next slide please okay so uh, uh, this slide gives a quick snapshot of all our products that we offer uh, under tantra mind brand uh, today's focus uh, would be supplier collaboration uh, which we will discuss in detail uh, during the next slides 
also we will see a demo uh, in meantime i will just give a quick overview of other products uh, that we have so i will start with the invoice management uh, our invoice management solution uh, provides a simple uh, reliable and smart platform to automate the manual incoming invoice uh, process for uh, accounts payable so you would have seen in your day to day activities there are a lot of invoices which come uh, and then it's a tedious manual effort to put those if those invoices into the system and uh, uh, take it further so uh, our invoice management solution seamlessly receives manage uh, receives manage process and validate all uh, all your invoices for flawless uh, business operations with uh, minimal efforts and uh, assistant our next uh, product is uh, erp it's an integrated intelligent ai based solution uh, which covers all core modules like sales uh, sales and distribution uh, production planning uh, finance material management uh, procurement asset accounting which are uh, needed by uh, needed to run any successful organization it is a leading erp utilizing ai ml technology to its best with focus on automation and value addition so as 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 i said earlier our focus is mainly uh, use the latest technologies of ai ml and see how we can automate most of the manual task uh, which uh, a business needs so it enables uh, uh, end users in automating most of their manual task in o2c cycle p2p cycle Uh, payment cycle uh, saving their time for focus on the key business uh, outcomes so that's a quick about uh, tantra minds uh, erp the next is uh, customer and supply collaboration portal uh, which we call it as a cs collab uh, it consists of a customer portal a supplier portal uh, we firmly believe that our customers and suppliers are key stakeholders and they are the integral part of our business process execution so customers and suppliers uh, experience is heart uh, of any business and then that they are very important uh, so our focus uh, while building these products were on the experience and provide a self service capabilities to our customers or our uh, suppliers so today we will see during um, uh, the next slides and the demo about our supplier collaboration but quickly about our customer uh, collaboration portal Uh, is a self service portal as i said uh, we uh, it's a self service portal where the customers can log in and they resolve their queries so it also provides a secure place uh, where your customers can manage their accounts uh, view and pay their invoices place orders and much more in real time uh, it offers a gateway to your business uh, where customers can solve account queries on their own at their convenient time and then hence uh before reaching out to you and then that uh, saves uh, some time of your support team i will not uh, speak uh, on supplier as uh, as i said we will cover it uh, during our next slides uh, quickly uh, our next product is uh, tantra minds e procurement solution uh, we have a e procurement uh, suite uh, for organizations who are looking for end to end procurement solution this includes sourcing platform uh, covering uh, request to quotation uh, tendering auctions uh, product project creation uh, required for the strategic sourcing it also includes a procure to pay solution which covers catalog based shopping experience that generally we get in b2c world as a consumer when we log on to amazon or other portals but uh, in uh, uh, enterprise world we do not get that kind of exposure uh, to our end users our aim is to provide a amazon like buying experience to the end users in the enterprise world for their buying needs uh, in direct be it uh, indirect purchasing or other any other requirement so that's a quick about our e procurement uh, uh, solution then we have our inventory management solution uh, and a warehouse management solution uh, it's best suited for organizations who are looking for uh, a warehouse management covering uh, both inbound outbound and inventory management solution so it covers um, both um, inbound outbound processes um, including uh, uh, the inventory part of the uh, solution uh, then last uh, but not least uh, we have a analytics uh, product uh, we have pre built analytics dashboards uh, which are plug and play for any erp uh, specifically we are focusing on sap but they are uh, fine tuned for any other erps too Uh, these are pre-built dashboards typically at a cxo level uh, like cfo head of sales ceo uh, and getting all their data from the erp and processing it on the dashboard 
uh, we have expertise in building these dashboards using various tools uh, like uh, SAC, Power BI, Tableau, ClickSense, ClickView, etc. The main um, uh, advantage is we, with our 11 years or more experience, uh, we know what kind of dashboards are required by the industry, by the CXO team, CEOs, CFOs, and we have made it as a templatized solution. So when we start these projects for any of the dashboards, we already come up with a pre-built dashboard, uh, which is almost 70 to 80 percent covering of your requirements. The remaining 20-30% uh, is where we discuss with you, see what fields are missing, what kind of data is missing, and then we uh, we plug and play, uh, add those fields, and the dashboards are ready in no time. So that's really all uh, uh, for from today's perspective. Just wanted to give a quick overview about other products. Uh, now uh, we will uh, we will focus on to the supplier collaboration. Uh, thank thank you again. And uh, quickly over to you, Nitin, uh, for uh, taking through the supplier collaboration. Thank you. So over to you, Nitin. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chandan, sir. Uh, so first of all, I would like to welcome all attendees uh, present here for the webinar. Uh, my name is Nitin Deshmukh, and I will be a host for the today's webinar. And in the next uh, 30 or 40 minutes, we will see how we can create a good experience to our organizations as well as for our suppliers. So as you can see on the screens, these are the modules which is available inside the supplier portal. The first module, we have a sourcing management. So under sourcing management, we have a uh, RFQ management. So usually on our portal, buyer can create a request for quotation, send that request for quotations to the multiple vendors. Multiple vendors quote their rates on the portal. And uh, after receiving all the quotations from the uh, vendors, we can do the comparisons between multiple quotations. And uh, on finalizations of one of the quotations, uh, then it will create the purchase order in our uh, ERP system. So PO automations we have done using a sourcing management. Uh, then we have a vendor onboarding. So in vendor onboarding, you know, when we want to onboard any vendors, we have to follow certain processes, certain rules to onboard that particular vendor. So that process is also available. So vendor onboarding is a digital process where the buyer can uh, send invitations to the suppliers. Then supplier will receive the email uh, for that invitations. It will open, they will open the registration form. Uh, then supplier uh, have to fill up some information, basic information for the registration. Also, the document attachment facilities are there. So you know that uh, to onboard the suppliers uh, in our organization, some documents is mandatory. So supplier can upload these documents or attach these documents along with the registration form. Uh, then on our supplier portal, we have an approval workflow to approve this registration application. And uh, the rejection facilities is also available. If the registration form have a, lock, a lack of information, then the buyer or any users uh, from the organization can reject that registration form. And on successful verification uh, of the information, it will create uh, the vendors in a ERP. So this is a vendor onboarding. And then the third model, we have a P2P hub. So after uh, the sourcing management and vendor registration, usually we create the purchase order uh, to that particular supplier. So that purchase order will be visible uh, to the onboarded supplier. So each and every suppliers have their unique ID and passwords. They will log into the uh, portal. They will be able to see uh, the created purchase order. PO acceptance are there. So if uh, the supplier is not to uh, agree with the schedule that you have mentioned in the purchase order, the change request mechanism are there. So on so supplier can raise their change request uh, on particular purchase order. And on approval that change request, it will update the purchase order in a backend ERP system. Uh, then uh, the other transactions like good receipts, uh, incoming invoices, so all the transactions will be available on the portal for the suppliers. And along with that, uh, the, one, the vendor ledgers, uh, so vendor will be able to see the list of open invoices, close invoices. So overall P2P process and P2P transactions is visible for the supplier. Then fourth module, we have a ASN and invoice automation. So in ASN and invoice automation, so when supplier uh, is going to start the delivery of that particular goods that we have ordered, 
the supplier has to log into portal click the purchase order it will create the asn documents the asn means advanced shipment notifications as soon as supplier create the asn it will trigger email notifications to uh, our buyer as well as for the store users uh, then uh, store on approval of uh, uh, the asn from the buyer and when we receive the goods at our factory premises and on confirmation uh, of a physical quantity by the store user uh, on a portal then it will create the good receipts in a back end uh, uh, back end erp system and at the same time it will trigger a email notifications to your finance team and the finance team also uh, log into the portal see how, uh, how much the goods we have received for that particular invoices and on submission or on confirmation of that particular asn it will post uh, or it will park the invoice uh, into the back end erp system so total p2p means purchase order good receipts uh, invoice so all p2p process uh, we have automated here using the asn and the last we have a e catalog where supplier can upload their uh, uh, goods or service catalog uh, on the portal buyer can compare uh, the catalog uh, so catalog items on a portal and on comparison after the comparisons and finalizations of the particular goods and services the other users from the organization they can create the uh, purchase requisitions they can add the particular goods or service into the carts and after the approval of that purchase requisitions it will create the purchase order you know back end erp system so these are the models which is available uh, inside our supplier portal and in next slide we will see uh, all process in the details so first we have a sourcing management so under sourcing management we have the request for quotation and these are the steps uh, which we can see uh, uh, to create the request for quotations so first is a create a, a quotation request on a portal send quotation request to multiple vendors multiple vendors can quote uh, uh, for that uh, request uh, then buyer will compare uh, the quotations and on finalizations it will create the purchase order in a back end erp system and in next slide we will see uh, how uh, yeah so yeah so in this slide you can see uh, the traditional uh, tendering and sourcing management so before go deep dive into a sourcing process we need to understand what is sourcing so sourcing is a process of vetting selecting managing a suppliers who can provide the input and organizations needs uh, for a day to day running and also sourcing is a task of carrying out a research creating executing the strategies uh, defining a quality quantity matrix and choosing a suppliers that meets this criteria as you can see on the screen uh, so this is a typical manual rfp process uh, which is a part of a sourcing and so in a manual rfp process buyer has to prepare a rfp templates in excel and share with their suppliers over a email and also when we receive the quotations from the vendors we have to maintain those quotations in excel and uh, after that manually we have to do the comparisons so while we are operating uh, all the rfq in excel so manually we have to do all the activities then offline we uh, we take approvals from the departmental head uh, to finalize the quotations and after the approval uh, manually uh, enter the data into the erp to create the purchase order and you know the rest of the process like uh, we share the purchase order with the suppliers then we have to take a regular follow up for the delivery uh, for the requested goods and services so this is a hectic and time consuming process a lot of efforts required to procure goods and services and this manual process impact on the other functions of the organizations like uh, if we are procuring a raw material then the production may be delayed uh, and its impact on the dispatch of a final product to our end customers so uh, you can see on the slides so these are the challenges the complete manual process for the vendor collaborations uh, vendor discovery is a manual manual efforts to collect the informations during the audits in ability uh, to use the best uh, class options technique like a dutch english japanese generate additional cost savings to the competitive bidding and post a po collaborations and follow up is a completely manual so in the next slide we will see how we can overcome this challenge by uh, developing a digital and automated solution so in this slide you can see uh, 
sourcing management. So before I start explaining all the process, I would like, I would like to explain the blocks you can see on the screen. So uh, in the left hand side, which is our ERP sections, and the right hand side, you can see the complete blocks belongs to our supplier portal. And the activity will start from uh, creating a purchase requisition. So usually user create the purchase requisitions in our ERP. That purchase requisitions will be available on our portal. So buyer can see these purchase requisitions. And by flipping the purchase requisition, it will create a request for quotations. And after publishing the request for quotations, that quotations will be visible for the vendors that we have added uh, for the quotations. Then vendor will post their rate. Uh, and once we receive the quotations and if the buyer is not satisfied with the rate quoted by the vendors, then buyer are, can ask for the revisions. And after the uh, after receive the revision rate, uh, the buyer will log the quotations because after locking, no vendors can quote for that particular request. Then buyer will do the comparisons on that uh, quotations, uh, which we have received from the uh, multiple vendors. And after completing or selecting one of the quotations, uh, it will create a purchase order onto our, uh, into our backend ERP system. It, uh, it could be ECC, S4, or any other ERP system. And then usually we send, uh, then uh, ERP system automatically send this purchase order to our portal. And that purchase order will be visible for that uh, awarded suppliers as well as for the buyer. So this is a uh, sourcing management process that we have developed. Uh, so these are the key benefits on the right hand side. You could see the same quotation request, uh, release RFQ. So if you want to take the uh, approval uh, for that particular request for quotations, the release features is there. Seamless submission of uh, RFI RFQ by vendors to the vendor management software. Uh, manage RFQ response. We can manage a multiple response uh, on this uh, system. Then log the RFQ to restrict the response. Uh, then request to vendors for the revisions. We can ask the vendors for the revision and all revision history also available onto our portal. And on award of that particular uh, quotation, it will create the purchase order to back in ERP system. So all here you can see the PO automations we have done uh, using a sourcing management. So in, in next slide, we will see. Uh, could you please come to the next slide? So I will hand it over to uh, Niki, uh, Nikita uh, to run the poll. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Nathan. Thank you for the presentation and demo. And uh, now I will request all our attendees to uh, answer the quick poll. So it's visible on your screen. I'm going to read it out for you. Uh, so are you experiencing any challenges or pain points in your current supplier management process? It's a multiple choice question. You can uh, opt for more than one. Uh, so delivery or dispatch updates or KYC confirmations, a uh, lot of emails or attachments, offline communication. I uh, will wait for a few more seconds to let just everyone submit their response. Uh, Nathan, shall we move ahead for demo? Uh, yeah, sure. Sure. Okay. So just a minute, uh, I'm setting up my system. Yeah. So I hope my screen is visible for all of us. Oh, yes, Nitin, it's visible. Yeah, so thank you for the confirmation, Nikita. 
So before I logged in, so this is a uh, login screen of our applications. And before I log in, I would like to tell you about the users and user roles available uh, on our supplier portal. So basically on our supplier portal, there are three types of user roles. First one is the admin role. Second one is a business user roles. And third one is the supplier role. So under admin roles, we can have uh, multiple admins users. And under the business user roles, uh, we can have a multiple business users like uh, a buyer, uh, buyer uh, document head, account payable clerk. So like that role available on, uh, under the business user roles. And the third roles, we have a supplier role. So under the supplier, uh, supplier roles, uh, we can have a multiple suppliers and each suppliers have uh, their unique ID and password. So just we have seen uh, the RFQ process and in RFQ process, you know, the activity will start from uh, the creation of uh, the request for quotation uh, by using a buyer rule. So now I'm going to log in as a buyer. So this is the user and these are the credentials I have entered here. So once I log in, yeah. So once I log in, I will be landed on this page. So this is the dashboard and here you can see we have a RFQ section. So I just click on the RFQ and to create a request for quotation. So here you can uh, see under RFQ tiles, we have a uh, RFQ sections. We have different tiles like a new uh, request response and complete. So each and every tile I will explain you during the demonstration. So to create a new RFQ, uh, buyer has to law click on this new tile. So after click on the new tile, I will land it on this page. So here you can see so these are the created RFQ and the status of that particular RFQ. And to create a new RFQ, I have to click on this create the RFQ button. So on the right hand side upper corner, here we have one button. So once I click on that, it will open a form. So buyer has to fill up this form. So RFQ date, the purchase organizations, Buyer has to select the purchase organizations, currency, quotation deadline date. So I'm adding the quotation deadline date to the six and the collective and comments. So these are the optional fields. So once I added all the informations, I have to click on the save button. Then uh, I have to add the line item informations, item information that I want to procure. So I'm selecting a particular item from here. So this is the material uh, that we have uh, in our vendor portal. And then here I have to add the target quantity. So I'm adding here the you know, 1000 quantity I need here. So from here we can uh, select a unit of measures, order unit. So I'm selecting here KG, the price unit. So I'm adding a one here and delivery date, expected delivery date I'm adding here the nine. And if you want to add certain comments, so you can add it here. So now I have added a material uh, that I want to create a quotation for that. Then here you can see the assign vendors. So now I'm uh, adding a vendors. They will uh, quote their rates. So I'm going to add some vendors here. The so first vendor I can see Bosch Private Limited. So I have added first vendor. So for the comparison, I need two vendors. So I'm adding another vendor. So I'm just adding another, added another vendor. So now I have added two vendors for the request for quotations. And here you can see a document section. So if you have any product specification for that particular material that you have added, so you can add the documents, design document, specification documents, quality related documents, terms and condition documents in the document sections. So now I have added materials and two vendors. I just have to click on the publish button. So once I click on the publish button, our portal will trigger an email notifications uh, to that particular uh, vendors that we have added. So it will take time. Yeah. So now RFQ su uh, successfully published. So the buyer rule completed. So uh, now I'm going to log in as a, a supplier and see how we can quote uh, the price for that particular request for uh, requested quotations. I'm going to sign out as a buyer and now I'm going to log in as a supplier. So this is a supplier credentials. So you know, I have added a logistic box, uh, one of the vendor and second vendor, which is the money trader. So now I'm a login as a uh, supplier. So 
you can see the first tile which is a change uh, change management that i will explain later and here you can see a rfq section so i just have to click on the rfq so as a vendor if i want to quote for that requested quotation so that requested quotations will be visible under the request tile so i just have to click on that uh, requested tile and here you can see uh, the published quotations for that particular vendors requested quotations so i'm just have to select uh, for that recently published quotations just a bit. yeah so this is the quotation just we have uh, created a request for quotations so now as a supplier i want to quote for that particular uh, goods so here you can see when button is there quote i have to click on this quote button and it will uh, after click on that button it will open a pop up window so here you can see the added informations by the buyer uh, will be visible for the supplier the target quantity so here uh, i have to enter uh, the quotation quantity so buyer have added uh, 1000 and i am going to quote for the 1000 quantity uh, the net price so i am adding here a 67 so here uh, i can select the payment term as a supplier so this is the payment term i have selected and i'm here i can uh, select a delivery date as well and if i want to insert any comment so i can insert it from here so i click now i'm click on the save button so now as a supplier uh, i have submitted my uh, quotation now i want to uh, submit the quotations uh, as another vendor that i have added uh, during the creation of rfq so this is the credentials for my another supplier so i am going to log in here so again here you can see a request type so i have to click on that type and here you can see uh, the quotations so same quotations uh, visible for that uh, uh, other vendor like a uh, logistic cost now i am uh, going to quote as a uh, second vendor so here again i have to click on the quote button again i am going to enter the uh, target uh, quotation quantity which is 1000 and net price i am adding here the 70 so as a first vendor i have added uh, a net price is 67 and the second vendor I'm, i have added the 70 and i am keeping a delivery date as it is and then click on the save button so now uh, the two vendors have submitted their quotations submitted their rates now as a buyer I have to check the uh, quotations submitted by the buyer, do the comparisons, and award that particular uh, quotations or particular request. So again, I'm logging as a uh, uh, buyer. Yeah, and the submitted response will be visible in a request style. Uh, sorry, in a response time. I just have to click on that and. So just a minute before that, I yeah. So that quotations will be visible in a request type. Quotation is a ninety nine. I just have to yeah. So the last one. So this is the uh, request for quotations, and after click on the more details. So here you can see a quote sections. So after click on that, here you can see the material which we have added, and these are two vendors. And this is the first quotation submitted by the first vendor. And this is the second quotation submitted by our second vendor. And here you can see the rates. So these are the rates. The first vendor have quoted a 67 and second vendor have quoted a 70. And if uh, we want to revise that particular quotation rate, so from here we can raise a request for the revisions. And if we want to do a comparisons from the multiple quotations which we have received from the multiple vendors that we have added. So here you can see a lock. So after locking all uh, the request for quotations, the vendors which we have added for the quotation, they cannot, uh, they will not be able to quote the rate uh, for that particular quotations. So now I have locked the quotations for the comparison. So that quotations will be visible uh, in a respond tile. So in a respond tile, uh, we can do the comparison. So I will show you how we can do the comparison. So this is the quotations. You can see the quotation number 99. I just have to click on the more details button. And here you can see the quotes. And if you want to do the comparisons, we have to select the particular vendors. So 
this is our first windows this is our second windows now here you can see a compare button so once i click on the compare button the comparison form will be visible so buyer can take the decisions from that and select a particular quotations uh, after the comparison so here you can see the 67 is a less rate uh, as compared to uh, this vendor. So I'm going to select that particular vendors to complete the quotations and to award that uh, particular quotation. So now I have selected that particular quotations and here you can see the following documents. So we can create a purchase order info record and create an assignment. So these are the documents which we can create in our backend ERP system. So now I have awarded the quotation to our first vendor. Uh, he ported the rate 67 and I want to create a purchase order, directly create the purchase order to that particular vendors, which we have already onboarded. So we can create the purchase order directly from here. So if I click on this button, uh, this portal send request to your backend ERP system to create the purchase order. And that created purchase order again will be visible onto our portal. And it will also trigger email notifications to that particular vendors which we have awarded. So now I am going to create the purchase order and complete the quotations. So like that, uh, uh, the RFP process uh, works on our applications. Uh, now I will hand, uh, hand it over to Nishan to share your screen and show the slides. Yeah, so our next part is our vendor onboarding. So these are the steps you can see on the screens for the vendor onboarding. So usually we create a invitations for the suppliers, then suppliers will upload their uh, KYC documents along with the registration form. Then my multiple uh, multi-level workflow to approve this registration form and also the approver can reject that registration form due to lack of details. And on successful verification, it creates a vendors in backend ERP system. So please come to the next slide. Yeah, so uh, before uh, go deep into a vendor onboarding process, we need to understand what is vendor onboarding. So vendor onboarding is a process of collecting, analyzing a supplier information in order to uh, register that suppliers in a company system. So uh, then we can securely purchase the goods from them and ensure the compliance. So you know, before we bring a new vendors or a suppliers uh, in our company, we, we will need to know what we are looking for in terms of performance, reliability, uh, pricing, reputations, and compliance. So to do this, uh, we have to create a vendor onboarding checklist or a registration form and ensures we have an efficient method for collecting or verifying uh, the both uh, contact information and detail of that uh, particular supplier. So in manual process, in offline process, uh, we have to prepare this registration, uh, registration form in Excel, the checklist we have to prepare in Excel. And then we have to share this registration form uh, uh, with our vendors that we are going to onboard. And after the preparations, buyer send this registration form to the suppliers over email. And then supplier will fill up the registration form and, uh, and send back to the buyers. And in, in case of delay in a submission of a registration form from the suppliers, then buyer have to take a follow up for them. And also, you know, uh, when we onboard any vendors, then we need to some documents uh, for the registration, like the GST registration certificates, PAN card, and any other documents which is required to, for your organization. So in the offline onboarding process, uh, supplier have shared those documents over email. And once we receive uh, the registration form uh, and mandatory documents, then we have to manually verify these informations. And if the form got rejected due to the lack of information, then we have to ask the vendor to resubmit the information. And uh, after all verifications and approval, uh, we have to manually enter all these informations into the ERP system. Now you have seen how this process is painful and time consuming. So how uh, we can overcome these challenges and how we can digitize uh, the onboarding process. 
So uh, Tantra Minds uh, uh, have addressed these issues and developed a digital solution to overcome these challenges. And in the next slide, we will see uh, how we can digitize and automate uh, a vendor registration process. So uh, here in the slides, you can see the activity will start from uh, creating an invitation request on our vendor portal. So in the left-hand side, you can see, uh, which is our ERP sections, SAP, ECC, S4, and any other ERP. And the activity will start from creation of invitations on our vendor portal. So usually uh, the sourcing user or buyer will create a invitations uh, for, for that particular supplier that we are going to onboard. And after creation of invitations, a supplier will receive a email notifications of that invitations. And uh, in that email notification, we will have one link. Uh, so supplier has to click on that link. Uh, it will open the registration form. Then supplier has to fill up that registration form. Uh, also supplier can attach mandatory documents like the GST registration certificates, uh, the finance related documents and submit the registration form. And once the form is submitted by the vendors, that form will be visible onto our applications. The sourcing user will verify the information first uh, on portal. And after verifications of the informations from the sourcing user, same informations will be visible for the account payable users. So account payable users will verify the finance related informations. And the last after approval of the finance user, uh, then the procurement user will enter the required informations, which is necessary to create the vendors in our backend ERP system. And after the approval and fill up all the informations by the procurement user on the portal, it will send a verified information to our ERP system. And uh, our ERP system will receive uh, the verified informations, uh, they create the vendors, it will automatically create the vendors. And that created vendors will be visible onto our portal. And at the same time, our portal trigger email notification uh, to that particular vendors uh, for the successful onboarding. So this is the process, digital process that we have developed. And these are the key benefits for the onboarding process. Uh, simply and digitize the vendor onboarding. You can define the mandatory onboarding documents for your company and attach the same. Vendor can upload their KYC details. Uh, paperless and hassle-free registration is there. Uh, mail notifications for each uh, level of e-workflow and integrations with the ERP system to create the approved informations or to create uh, the vendors. So these are the key benefits. Now come to the next slide, please. So again, I will hand over to Nikita to run the poll. Yes, uh, thank you, Nathan, for the presentation. So you can see a poll questions on the screen. Are you interested in a one-to-one -one demo of our supplier collaboration platform? You have to answer in yes or no. I think. Uh, I Nathan, are you ready for the next demo? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, okay. So then we can move ahead. Again, sharing. So now I'm going to demonstrate uh, a vendor onboarding process. I hope my screen is visible for all of us. So, 
So buyer can create an invitation request uh, to the particular vendors or the supplier that you want to onboard. So now to create an invitation request, I am going to log in as a buyer. So here you can see the vendor registration sections and under vendor registration sections, we have a different files, which is new submissions, approved, registered, rejected and all. So we will see all these tiles in the details. So first of all, I will click on this new tile to create an invitation request. So to create an invitation request, I have to click on the add vendors button. So once I click on this button, I will land on this uh, uh, page. So here I will have to enter some basic informations like the, the first name of the vendors. So I'm going to add my name here. Uh, then email ID. So I'm going to add my email ID. Uh, then uh, here, the phone number I'm going to add here. So, so I'm here, I have to add the company name. I'm going to add the company name here. So here, after adding all the informations, basic informations, you can see uh, the invite button. So uh, to create the invitations, I have to click on the invite button. So I clicked on the invite button. So now our portal trigger email notifications uh, uh, to that particular vendors that we have added. And it, it will send the email to on this particular email ID that we have added at the time of the creation of invitations. And so after invite that particular vendors, the vendor will receive an email notification. So I have added my name uh, and my email ID there. So just I have received the email notification that you can see. And here we have a, a link. So I have to click on this link. Yeah. yeah. So here you can see the registration form. So now as a, as a vendor, I, I have to fill up all the required informations which asked by uh, the particular organizations. So here you can see a contact information. So email address for the purchase order. So I'm going to add my email ID here. Uh, the email address for the banking details. So again, I'm adding my email ID here. So trading uh, vendor name and trading name. So these are the mandatory information. You can see the red star is there. I'm adding uh, the same. Uh, trading name, legal entity, I'm adding here the limited. Uh, the VAT registration number is the GST registration number. So I'm going to add the GST registration number here. And the PAN number. So these are the mandatory information that we will have to add. Uh, for the registration. So if we have a website URL, so we can add it here, uh, the registration address. So the company belongs to India. So I'm going to select India from here. The region belongs to the Maharashtra, the city, Pune. The district is also Pune. And the zip code. So here I have to add the zip code and the address. So here we have to add the detail address. So I'm adding the address here. And if the trading address is same, so we have to click on this checkbox. So that address will automatically come here. Then here we have to add the phone numbers. So I'm going to add my phone number here. Uh, then account receivable email ID. So if we have a different, different email ID for the account receivable, account payable and banking related, so we can add it. But for the demo purpose, I'm adding uh, same email ID for here. Are you accept the card payment? So we have to select one of the option here. Yes or no. I'm selecting yes. The currency preference for the transaction. So they can support the different, different currencies. So I'm going to uh, select INR. And here you can see the account holder name. So banking related informations uh, I have to add there. So I'm going to 
add the banking account holder name, uh, which is our radius system. Here I'm going to add uh, the vendor numbers, bank name, uh, branch name, then IFC code. So these are the mandatory information as a suppliers I, uh, I have to add here. And here you can see the product category. So as a supplier, I can select the product category from here. Click on the OK button. Then here you can see a document section. So here uh, we can attach, uh, as a supplier, I can attach a mandatory documents like a GST registration certificates. So we have to provide the document name here. So I'm going to provide the GST, REG, PERT. If you have any remarks for that particular documents, you can add it here. If our document is stored on a drive or any other on cloud, so we can provide the link in the link section. And we can also maintain the version of that particular documents. So I'm entering here version 1.0. And from here, we have to select these mandatory documents. So I'm going to select any of the documents from here. This is the documents I have selected. So now I have sub, uh, I have added all the required information. So here you can see two buttons, submit and save. So I'm going to click on the submit button. So now you can see uh, I have added all the information and submitted the registration form. Now this registration form will go uh, to the multiple approval workflow uh, for the approval uh, and for the registration in our backend ERP system. And So you can see the submission. Here you can see the submitted submitted form. So this is the submitted form just I have submitted as a suppliers. And here you can see awaiting buyer approval. So here the buyer can review all the submitted informations. And after reviewing all the informations, buyer can reject or accept that particular information. So I'm going to accept. And here uh, you can put the remark. So I can adding approved. Click on the yes button. So now this form is uh, visible for uh, the finance user. Now I'm going to log in as a finance user to verify the attached documents and verify the finance related information. So we have a finance user roles. So here you can see the account payable users that we have. I'm going to log in as the account payable user. So once I log in again, I will be landed on this page and that submitted and approved uh, form by the buyer will be visible in approved sections. So here as a account payable user, I have to verify the finance related information. So I have to click on the more details button. So as an account payable user, uh, I will verify the financial information along with the attached documents, mandatory documents. And here again, you can see two buttons, accept and reject. So I click on the accept button. Again, I'm putting here accept. And after the acceptance of the finance user, the same form will be visible in a registered, uh, registered section. So in the registered sections, the procurement user will fill up the information which is necessary uh, for the registration in our ERP system. And after fill up all the information and submission of all the information, it will create a vendor in our backend ERP system. So this is a vendor registration process, just we have seen. So now, uh, Nishant, please share your screen for the further processes. The next sections, we have a P2P hub, uh, uh, ASN invoice automations. So uh, we will see in a details. So please come to the next slides. So we have a diagram for that. Yeah, so this is an ASN process. So you know when, uh, when we create the purchase order in our ERP system, that purchase order will be visible uh, to that particular uh, company user as well as for the suppliers. And here you can see uh, that purchase order will be visible for the company users and the suppliers. Then supplier has to flip that purchase order to create the ASN. So, uh, before flipping, supplier will check the delivery schedule available inside the purchase order. 
and after flipping the purchase order uh, that uh, uh, it will create the asn document that asn documents first visible for the buyer buyer will review the asn here you can see under the company user sections buyer is reviewing the asns and after reviewing the asns by the buyer and once we receive the goods at the factory gates the factory gate user will verify the asn informations along with the goods and the documents they have received and after the security gates confirmations it will create the inbound delivery in the erp section so you can see on the screen on the left hand side it is uh, it is creating the inbound delivery at the same time once the inbound delivery got created it will update the inbound delivery number into the same asn documents and once uh, the uh, the inbound doc in uh, inbound number updated in that particular asn then it will trigger email notifications to the store user then store user uh, will verify the actual quantity actual received quantity uh, into uh, their factory premises and on confirmations of the quantity uh, received and and enter uh, the received quantity into that particular asn it will create the good receipts into our erp system and again that created good receipt number will be updated in that particular asn document and at the same time our portal trigger email notifications to uh, the finance team to verify the asns then finance team will verify the asns and on confirmations and verifying all the uh, informations like the, uh, the gate entry numbers uh, good receipts number and on confirmations it will create the invoice receipts in our back end erp system and again update that uh, invoice receipt number on our uh, that particular asn documents so this is a asn process that we have on our portal so now i am going to share my screen to demonstrate this process i hope my screen is visible so it will not take much time i will finish the demo within a 5 to 6 minutes so first of all i will uh, log in as a supplier to create the asn so now you can see i logged in as a supplier and here as a supplier i can see a purchase order section so under purchase order sections as a supplier i can see the open purchase order close purchase order all purchase order and if we have any delivery schedule inside the purchase order so that delivery schedule will be visible in a delivery schedule section so now uh, uh, i have to create the asn so to create the asn i have to click on the open button so here you can see the ship uh, uh, button is there uh, is available in in front of the purchase order so now i am going to click on a particular ship button okay so now you can uh, you can see the shipment id is created and i will automatically navigate to the asn page so here i uh, as a supplier i have to enter some informations like a, a asn number so asn number it could be the invoice number the ship from details i have to add here i am shipping from pune to mumbai if we have a, a packing slip id so we can add the packing slip id here uh, the shipping date so when i am going to ship this material so i am going to ship this material at uh, uh, 5th of may and the delivery date will be a uh, 7th of uh, may and once i added this information i have to click on this button and i have to select a line item uh, inside the purchase order so these are the purchase order belongs to uh, that particular supplier so if we want to create a asn for the multiple purchase order so we can create the asn for the multiple purchase order as well you can see the multiple purchase order number is visible here so is if supplier is going to deliver the material against the multiple purchase order so that's why you can see all the purchase order number here so now i have added the information so here as a supplier i have to add the ship quantity so here you can see uh, uh, the order quantity which is same and here i have to enter the ship quantity and if we have some supplier batch id so we can add here production date so we can add the production date and expiry date as well and click on the okay button so now i have added the item informations uh, that i am going to deliver to that particular organizations and here i can add the tracking informations dimension related informations uh, delivery and transport related informations 
all the information as a supplier I can add here. <clears throat> and here you can see a document section. So here I can add uh, e-mail, this uh, delivery documents and any other documents which is necessary. And uh, after adding all these documents as a supplier, I have to click on the submit button. So once I click on the submit button, so that ASN will be visible for the buyer. Then buyer will verify the ASN informations and after the verification of that information and when we receive the goods at the factory gate uh, and on verification of the goods and uh, the documents at the factory gate, it will create the inbound delivery in our backend ERP system. So I'm going to show you how the ASN will look like in a buyer section. So again, here you can see the ASN and this is an ASN tile. And at the last, uh, just we have created the ASN document. So this is the ASN documents will look like for the buyer and the buyer after the confirmations of this ASN, it will create the inbound delivery and the inbound delivery number again will be updated on this same ASN documents. And again, when store user confirms the quantity physically received, uh, it will automatically post the good receipts in a backend ERP system and that created good receipts will be visible for the supplier in a good receipt section. This is a good receipt section and in good receipt section supplier will be visible, uh, supplier will be able to see uh, the received good receipts information and on confirmations of the finance user, uh, it will post the invoice into the backend ERP system so that ERP, the invoice report is visible and we can see the invoice details. So this is the invoice details that we can see. And uh, then we have a overdue and outstanding section. So as a supplier, if I want to see a complete ledger, so that complete ledgers will be visible for the supplier. So this is the ledger information. So here you can see uh, the net amount due, net amount cleared uh, so along with the invoice status. So these are the invoice documents. So these are the status of that particular invoice, which is clear. And here you can see uh, the amount amount in local currency. So like that, the informations will be visible for the suppliers. So this is a process and this is a complete P2P process that we have automated using our uh, supplier collaboration platform. So now I will hand over to Nikita for the further questions, question and answer section. Hello, Nikita. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Yeah, so this is a complete process flow of our uh, application that you can see on the screen. So, so after this call, we will share these documents with you uh, to give the detailed understanding of our. Uh, process so here you can see on the top our supplier portal and in the middle we have an integration layer between our erp system and at the last we have our erp system the erp system it could be ecc uh, score hana and any other erp and just i have explained the module so that module you can see on the screen the sourcing vendor management and p2p inbound and invoice automation so this is the process flow diagram of our uh, application now, please come to the next slide. Yeah. Again, uh, please run the poll. Yes, Nathan. Uh, thank you for the presentation and demo. Uh, I'll request our audience to kindly answer the poll question. Uh, I'm going to read it out for you. So, which process automation are you looking in your organization? So, it's a multiple choice question. Again, you can opt for more than one. Uh, we have vendor portal, invoice automation, sourcing and auction process, and ASN and GR creation process. We'll wait for a few more seconds. Uh, 
uh, now I think we can move ahead for the QA round. So yes, uh, we have received one questions. Uh, the vendor just now is any report available uh, when the vendor code request same, and when the vendor updated the details till the vendor code created in the SAP for the audit purpose. Uh, yes, the report is available. So if you want to update any information related to the vendors, so that change request using change request, we can update that particular vendor details. I couldn't understand your questions. I think so. And the next you have asked, sir, how does your solution integrate uh, with our existing system and the processes? So if you have a backend ERP system like the SAP, uh, ECC, S4 HANA, or any other ERP system like the Oracle, uh, NetSuite, and Microsoft Dynamics. So we have developed some web services, web APIs. So using that web services and web APIs, we can integrate our system with your ERP, existing ERP system. And uh, for pushing and pulling the data, the two types of mechanism our application will support. Uh, one is a FTP-based integration, and second one is a web service-based integration. So the diagrams and the details I will share with you uh, after uh, this session. Then is this a cloud solution or on-premise solution? So this application uh, will support for the cloud as well as for the on-premises. So both options are available. Uh, then I have received one question. So when a change is made in a real time, SAP real time, how how is the schedule delayed in the portal or update immediately? So basically, uh, just I have said the two types of integrations uh, we can do with our SAP system. One is FTP based and second one is a web service based. So if we uh, integrate uh, our applications using our web services, so it will take near about uh, 10 to 15 seconds uh, to post the transactions or if we have posted any transaction in our ERP system, that posted transactions will be available on the portal after the 10 to 15 seconds. And if we chose the uh, FTP-based integrations, then it will take 25 to 26 seconds or 30 seconds to update uh, the details on our portal or vice versa. Mm. Is it possible to onboard the import vendors or add details? Yes, it will support uh, for the import vendors as well. So you can see uh, when I was demonstrating the vendor registration process, so it will support the multiple currencies. So if you want to onboard the import vendors or the vendors belongs to uh, out of India, you can use this process for the onboarding. Uh, for the offline system, how do you connect a supplier uh, how, for offline system? How do you connect with the supplier to SAP? I couldn't understand your questions for offline system. For offline system, you mean to say uh, the on-premises. You have an on-premises SAP system and you want to uh, integrate this on-premises SAP system with our application. So using the FTP-based mechanism or web service-based mechanism, we can integrate with that solution that we have. So I will provide you the documents for that, for the integration. Uh, is the vendor can acknowledge the PO through the portal? Yes, vendor can acknowledge the PO on portal as well. So when we create the purchase order, that purchase order will be visible to the vendors on vendor portal. Then vendor have to accept that purchase order. So on acceptance of that particular purchase order, uh, the buyer will receive the acknowledged mail for that. And if the buyer, uh, if the supplier uh, is not agree with the schedule or the condition, terms and condition that we have mentioned in our uh, purchase order, so they can raise uh, a change request for that. And that uh, change, again, that change request will go for the multiple approval workflow. And after the approval of that change request, our portal automatically update the purchase order in the ERP system. Uh, can price info record create in SAP from RFQ? Uh, yes, from RFQ, uh, uh, I have demonstrated uh, the three types of documents we can create. Uh, 
one assignment documents purchase order and info record so we can create the info record as well can you give the demo on analytics uh yes uh, uh, we have some pre-built analytics uh, for that and if you want to uh, uh, you want to see the demo for that so nikita will connect with you for the demo I think I hope I answer all the questions. Yes, so uh, thank you, Nitin, for answering all the questions. Uh, I think we have come to an end. So uh, I'd like to say thank you to all the attendees. And uh, thank you so much for joining our webinar and we really appreciate your participation and your questions and comments really added value to this discussion. So uh, everyone, please feel free to contact us for any inquiry or if you want to know about our product, you can also drop us an email and we'll definitely get back to you. And uh, at last, yes, uh, thank you everyone for joining. Well, looking forward to uh, connect with you in future as well. Yeah, thank you so much.